要搞松饼，我必须打饼。The rapport that we build with our staff and the staff build within themselves, the fun we have when we are busy or you know slamming drinks, that's something that only a hawker store yeah. this small can give you. My name is Faye uh, and I'm 33 this year. I'm Anna and I'm 33 this year also. Coffee Break is a third generation hawker store. We specialize in making traditional kopi and teh and toast. Coffee Break actually started in 1999 and about six years ago, my brother and I, Jack, we took over full time. I took over three years ago actually. Before Coffee Break, I was a sports event and marketing executive with the Volleyball Association of Singapore. I was a preschool teacher before joining them. Well, my first challenge with my brother was when we first took over, we lost a lot of our debt regulars. They would look at us and just like, so young, know how to make kopi and all. Know how to make and all. When I first had to open the outlet at Kenridge alone, and it was like my first time opening a shop on my own, and I didn't really know how to brew yet. So I had to open and I had to like make the drinks, and I have to remember to keep the reputation of that newly opened shop. And not tarnish the one at Amoy also. Yeah, so that was a bit more challenging for me when I first started. So the toast, right, we have uh, traditional flavours and the homemade spreads. The homemade spreads are more popular and it's a bit more different from kaya, you know, butter sugar, the usual ones you find outside. So what inspired us to come up with the black sesame toast spread was when we were in Japan, we tasted this mochi filled with black sesame and it was pretty good, not too sweet. So we thought of bringing that back to Singapore. We decided to make it on our own and then make it into the drink version also and it's quite well received. The black sesame is roasty and sweet and milky at the same time. So it's a very good sensation when you have it hot or cold. The Earl Grey toast, it was actually born more out of a necessity. Like, uh, I, I'm sick of Earl Grey tea. I'm gonna try and put it into a spread or into a tea latte. That's how he came up with the idea actually. You can actually get hojicha in in many places. A lot of cafes outside. But for us, it's different because we tweak the sweetness of the drink. In other places, they usually just make it gosong. They don't put sugar. For us, we put sugar. So that adds a little bit of flavour into the drink itself. When we first started out with hojicha tea latte, a lot of people, they don't really want to try flavours like that. But after you introduce it and people start coming back to order it again, that's when you realise it works. It's a hit. Yeah, it's a hit. La. Right now, our roles when we are running the business together are quite different. We do have more staff to manage now. The three of us are actually running three different shops. Being able to make a direct impact with our decisions on our business, on our industry and on the society is the biggest motivation. motivation. Recently, we've bestowed this responsibility of continuing our craft, our heritage and our culture through what we do here. Even though it was quite unexpected, but I think we do relish the challenge. I think also because we don't really see third generation hawkers doing coffee and tea. It's mostly food. To be given this responsibility in keeping up with the family tradition of making traditional coffee and tea is um, the biggest motivation of course, I think. Most importantly for young hawkers who are just starting out, don't be afraid. There will be a lot of criticism and hardships, but you need at least a year into the business to be able to see the fruits of your labour. A lot of people just give up after a few months, but I feel like you should really give your business a year for people to recognise your brand and recognise your products. Tiring is a definite yes, but fun and satisfaction is also a very big percentage of being a hawker.